pleasure to, want to announce our second uh, keynote speaker. This is Assistant Professor Gregor Kappa, who received his Master of Science and PhD degrees in Electrical Engineering from the Uni University of Ljubljana, Slovenia, in 2000 and 2002, respectively. He is a researcher and head of computer systems department at Jozef Stefan Institute, Ljubljana, Slovenia, and an assistant professor at Jozef Stefan International Postgraduate School, Ljubljana, Slovenia. His research interests include multi objective meta heuristic optimization methods and hazard implementation of high, high complexity algorithms with applications to production, logistics, transport, energy, and, 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 and environmental sustainability. He led and was the principal investigator in several national and European projects dealing with energy efficiency, production processes optimization, and algorithms development. And it's my pleasure to now to introduce and welcome. Thank you. Okay, today uh, I would like to present you my talk uh, with the title Cyber Physical Systems Based Proactive Collaborative <coughs> Maintenance. But firstly, I think to add a few words, however, most of it was just said. Uh, I'm a researcher at the Olaf Stefan Institute uh, in Ljubljana. Um, I'm also head of the department. My department works on development of uh, hardware structures, efficient algorithms for massive data, uh, for uh, dynamic uh, non-deterministic systems. Uh, and we implement these powerful solutions to different areas ranging from production, transportation, energy, etc. Uh, but of course, today I will present uh, one of the projects, we have many projects uh, in different areas, ranging from our Horizon uh, framework, also to Excel, Artemis, FP7, still one, still running, and also some other projects. However, uh, the project that I'm trying to present you today to have an insight of what we are doing is the recent, recent project. Uh, I will present some basic facts about it. It is a uh, Mantis project. Uh, the full title is also the title of this presentation. Uh, this project is uh, founded by Excel uh, undertaking. undertaking, undertaking uh, it's also part of Horizon uh, framework. It started uh, in May last year and it will last for a year and a half from now, approximately. There are 47 partners from 12 countries. Uh, and the project is coordinated by Spanish uh, University. Um, of course, for administrative reasons, I have to present also this sentence uh, to fulfill my obligations with regards to the project. Um, as I mentioned, there are 12 countries involved. Uh, kind of a Central European with uh, Germany, countries, uh, and Finland, and UK. And what was the motivation for this project when about two, maybe three years ago, we decided to apply for it? Uh, these are, let's say, some references, citations. Um, maintenance is uh, no longer something that uh, is evil cost. We don't want to fail, but uh, we, we have to find some important function in maintenance. And out of this, some new business models have to be derived. There are a lot of questions with regards to maintenance. What is the lifetime, life uh, expectancy of some parts in assets? Uh, how can we predict some important uh, part, uh, life, lifetime, or similar, how to detect something, uh, how to find uh, the root of uh, failures, uh, 
how to reduce times when we don't want our assets to be non-working, etc., etc. There's a lot of questions. Uh, so, the goal of the project is to develop a CPS, Cyber Physical System, uh, maintenance service, uh, service platform that will en enable collaborative maintenance ecosystem. Very uh, bureaucratic sentence. Uh, but in fact, it is about, uh, we want to make such a platform <coughs> that will allow us to reduce some certain factors like adverse impacts of maintenance, uh, reduce time required for maintenance, increase the availability of the assets, whatever it is, production, uh, vehicles, fleets, improve the quality, uh, improve working condition, etc. If, if you go deeply into technical objectives of this project, uh, the idea is to define the overall service platform architecture with uh, uh, distributed, uh, distributed computations uh, and in the first place with proactive maintenance uh, capabilities uh, to develop uh, uh, distributed sensing with local uh, data processing uh, uh, to have powerful and efficient decision making, making systems and also at the end to provide user-friendly, ergonomic, intuitive and context-aware uh, human-machine interactions because after all if we, we are dealing with, uh, with uh, maintenance there are always some operators that have to fix the machine, uh, check the parts, etc. Uh, so his work has to be uh, done in connection with machine. He, he has to know what to do next, how to do next, how to collaborate with some external uh, service uh, offices, etc. Uh, there, are, of course, uh, the project which is oriented. Uh, to companies, uh, I forgot to mention before, among 47 partners, there is uh, like 60% uh, of them are companies, SMEs and large industry. So uh, they are willing to, not just to get some new research uh, ideas, some new algorithms, computational intelligence, etc., but they would like to have the product which they, like a service product, they can offer also to some other partners. So there are also some uh, business opportunities for uh, those partners. Uh, well, how to make efficient use of large amount of data in different assets, companies like uh, production companies, there is a lot of data which can help us in order to uh, prepare a good maintenance plan, to prepare for the next failures, uh, to prepare for the replacement of parts, uh, but not always all this data is considered. Uh, many companies just record data, they have a lot of sensors, but they don't have a clue what to do with this data. Uh, so this, this idea of our platform is to join all the all the data uh, and to derive some new knowledge about it which will help us or uh, servicemen to make uh, correct decisions in, in uh, with regard to maintenance in direct in correct time uh, there are several aspects uh, of the project. One is the architecture. Then, it just, then the, the, let's say the first line between the architecture itself, the platform, and the production is obviously some sensoric part. Uh, sensors are needed to gather data. Uh, and uh, 
during this project also some more precise or let's say even more smarter sensors will be even developed or adapted uh, uh, to, to capture also some parameters that were not accessible at that time. Uh, this might also include some so-called soft sensors, which is actually uh, the combination of data that we receive from, let's say, uh, regular hardware sensors. But when we merge them, we can extract some new information out, out of it. Decision-making support is an intelligent computation part of the proposal or, or one, one of the work packages is about how to gather this data, this, uh, data, how to identify parameters, the patterns in the, the information, in the data and in the information. How to build new, let's say, wear out models uh, to predict remaining lifetime of machine or part of machine. Uh, different prediction algorithms, uh, optimization models, procedures for uh, of, uh, maintenance uh, and of course uh, how to help localize uh, distribute it and uh, different hierarchical decision making network in order to allow that depending on the amount of work that is needed whether it should be done locally on the level of sensors or should be done somewhere in the cloud where the platform resides, uh, this is all required just to tr try to uh, reach the, let's say, real time or at least uh, just in time reactions. Uh, and I, as mentioned before, intuitive HMI, human machine interaction or interface is needed at the end to <coughs> present the data to the staff. If I go, go deeply into the concept of the proposal, uh, out of the slides that, that I just presented, it is obvious uh, that proactive maintenance service platform should allow estimating future performance, predicting uh, and prevent uh, failures and scheduled proactive maintenance. Uh, all of this is a necessity in order to prevent some asset being a production plant, being a healthcare system, <coughs> being fleet of vehicle, uh, to stop working when we don't want to do it, when we do, do not want that this happens. Uh, well, yeah, that's uh, more or less what I mentioned before. To, to have some distributed process uh, that allows us to get all this all this uh, data. Uh, <clears throat> so the platform will have kind of a advanced data monitoring, uh, communication and analytics, with self-learning capabilities. This self-learning is needed because not all parts, not all machinery in production uh, behaves the same in every installation. Uh, it, it depends on the environment, uh, it depends on the usage of the machinery, etc. etc. So uh, for each factory, for example, uh, the system uh, must know besides it's uh, like, let's say, standardized uh, procedures like uh, 20,000 working hours of the, of the tool, uh, but also depends on what material do, do we use, uh, at what temperature do we handle it, etc. So all conditions are something that influence the re uh, results. And in, and in order, to give a big picture of, uh, of the, the project uh, in, and really a picture, uh, we need to have some 
smart sensors, whether it's in plant, on vehicles, uh, some uh, energy production uh, assets, uh, to gather data. We need to analyze it, this data locally. For example, it is useful to locally uh, get some data because in this case we reduce the amount of bit, uh, bandwidth that we require for communication uh, even more because we often have some harsh environments whether these are vehicle on some construction yards whether it is production where there's a lot of electromagnetic fields etc so we have to be capable also to communicate in challenging environments. environments. Uh, and this is the so-called uh, intelligent part which, where everything sh should be calculated, uh, predicted, etc. Uh, of course, it, it should be and it must be stored somewhere. Not just storing the, the data that we captured, that we calculated, uh, but also some other information of the parts, like our know, data sheets uh, and similar. And of course, at the end, uh, we need to have some media to communicate with servicemen, on the other hand. Uh, why, why proactiveness? Uh, it is not uh, just enough, uh, as I mentioned, we don't want to have the repairs when we don't like them. We want to schedule them, and on the other hand, we want to predict them. Uh, and not like, just like predicting on the nature, like this tool has, as I mentioned, 20,000 uh, working hours specified, but these tools has 20,000 working hours speci specified, and we also detect it that the temperature on the tool is rising, which is not, which should not be happening. We also know that we, the temperature in our production is above average, which was not uh, meant when we installed it, etc. So there's a lot of additional information which is not space specified in the data sheets. Even some many tools they have a uh, working point. This tool should operate in. This, at this temperature, at that pressure, at whatever condition, uh, and then the producer will uh, guarantee you 20,000 uh, working hours. Otherwise, if the temperature is lower, higher, higher uh, pressures, uh, this will change. It will not be 20,000 hours. Uh, collaborativeness. <coughs> One of the uh, important aspects in this proposal is how to ensure that all parts of the platform, which includes uh, uh, also people, uh, will share information, resources, responsibility, risks, that's the definition, but in other words, it is how uh, different uh, people different organizations, let's say some uh, outer uh, service providers, etc., et similar, can contribute in order to, again, reduce the time for maintenance, to schedule maintenance at the right, at the right time. Uh, if I try to present it in a in, in picture, we should have some way of collaborative sensors in, in one, let's say, in one plant. That, that means there can be different sensors, and as I mentioned before, according to different, let's say, to three sensors, we can not only have three, uh, three distinct data, like temperature, pressure, and uh, something else, but out of this, we should be able to extract additional information. Uh, and again, this is possible if we know, if we have the models, if we have uh, 
the possibility to calculate this, to locally process information, to get some additional fourth and fifth information, for example. We have to collaborate on the level with different uh, vendors uh, in a fleet. We might have, for example, uh, windmills of different producer in our company, uh, but we still have to exchange information of different vendors. Uh, also on the level of uh, data information, data sheets, uh, and at the end, which is the most obvious, collaboration with workers. It is about having, let's say, several uh, servicemen working on one windmill, each of them having specific tasks to be done. Uh, let's say, imagine such a tablet that each of them have. Uh, whenever someone does his task, one of the items in his task, uh, this should reflect on the task, tasks that the others have to, to do. Um, it is like, um, I'll try to use some plastic idea out of it. Uh, person A and B, they have to fix this computer. Uh, uh, but uh, this computer is here and maybe some data storage of the computer is on the other place. Uh, they have to somehow communicate to establish what is the problem with it, how to fix it. Person A has to press one button, person B has to press another button there, etc. This can be done with different ways of communication. This is not necessary through the tablet, of course, but the, the, the system that these persons use has to enable them, has to allow them to have some kind of communication uh, to speed up the process of uh, uh, repairing this computer. It, it is possible that I press button A going da downstairs and tell the person, okay, I press it, what now? Will you press now your button, etc. But it might be also some, let's say, quicker ways with some kind of communication between them. Context awareness is uh, another important approach. It is about uh, that the system, if we go to, to this part of the system, or when we present information, uh, that we know where we are, not only like location, also about the orientation, similar. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, what time is it? What uh, season is it? Uh, what time span is it? Uh, also, who we are. I mean, what is my role? For example, if I'm in one company, in production company, something is going wrong. If I take, for example, this tablet, I, for example, log into the system, and the system knows, first of all, this, that in this case, for example, I locked as a uh, serviceman, uh, the, the, the guy with the wrench in my hand, etc. The system knows that I'm in this part of the production plant. The system knows that I'm looking at, at the problematic uh, machine, and it gives me some information. Okay, this machine, the problematic part is some valve out there, it is overheating, etc. And you should take the wrench, uh, turn the turn it uh, left, right, whatever. Or I may I might be <coughs> the other part of the uh, uh, production line, and the system tells me, well, there is no problematic parts go into that another part. So that that is about uh, location. Was about orientation. No, you are not looking at the correct machine. Look that behind you. Th that is what the, the the tablet itself must be capable of. The tablet has all the capabilities to tell you that. It has all all the sensors, uh, gyroscopes, uh, GPS. <coughs> okay, problematic inside, but other sensors. There there are a lot of ways to detect where you are, 
where are you, what is your direction, orientation, what are you doing, what is your proximity, etc., elevation. This is the information that is available, but we have to process it. We have to know that I'm, as my role, I'm here. I might be uh, uh, a manager of this company, taking the same tablet, logging as a manager, and then the system will not tell, you, tell me, take the wrench and turn the valve. No, it will say, tell me, okay, because this is still not fixed, there's a problem with overheating. It might happen that in next few hours, the production on this line will stop. The measures that you have to take are, I don't know, uh, start checking with your um, customers if it is problem that we will deliver some product next day instead of today, etc. There are different roles, so I get different information. Uh, but still, I also have the warning, well, one of the servicemen is not working on this product, <coughs> etc. So this is the idea of context awareness. And as I already mentioned, it was, you might have noticed the collaborative part that I mentioned earlier. Uh, at the end, I will try to present you a few uh, things just to imagine whatever the theory I'm talking now, <laughs> how it is realized by now. By now. Um, well, uh, I will try to skip a few uh, slides uh, with, with less importance uh, just to try to catch the time. Use cases. Uh, the project itself is not, let's say, does not have enough value if it, it is not validated under some use cases. And as I, if you recall, 20, 47 partners and uh, quite big uh, consortium, but we also have 11 use cases. We have the, uh, they are all, of course, uh, maintenance related. Either is it production, like shaver production, protrusion line, press machine, etc. Uh, these are the companies involved. Or we have some vehicle maintenance, some special uh, uh, off-road uh, vehicles, uh, uh, like railway systems. We have energy production. It is either windmills, photovoltaic plants, or even conventional energy production. And even one case in health equipment maintenance. So these 11 use cases are used and will be used to evaluate whatever will be done in, within the, pro, uh, the project. Uh, just to give the, this picture again, uh, where these uh, use cases are located. And mostly there are some cluster around these use cases. So some partners are working like five to six partners on one uh, use case, another on different use case. But of course, there are some partners which are working on some common functionalities of the platform. Uh, just to give you the, the uh, insight, like how big machines we are working on. Uh, this, for example, is one machine. And uh, you can imagine the size of it. Um, also, uh, the importance of it, because it is so big, it obviously makes something big in one cycle. And, and if this machine stops, uh, there's a, quite a big problem. Uh, to, uh, to make it uh, plastic uh, in some companies, uh, from the automotive industry, it might happen that uh, several hours of stopping the, the production, it can cause up to several hundred thousand euros. Uh, uh, so it is very important to not to help production stops <laughs> when we don't want them. Uh, well, this is like a picture of the healthcare system like uh, MRIs, MRIs, a similar system, which also need to be maintained, which also needs some correct measures not to stop. We, we all know that it is problem. We come to the doctor or some special treatment, and then 
nothing ha happened, got the equipment is out of order, uh, and it might take seven days, weeks to come again uh, into the line, at least unfortunately in, in, in our country. Uh, oh, a few more images. Um, the innovation potential of the, pro the project we are working on is, uh, I'll try to be short, is on service platform architectures like uh, specifying and bringing into the into the life uh, the, the platform that will integrate uh, all data structures and, uh, uh, with, and will be interoperable on different levels. Uh, it will possess and support real-time smart sensing and data acquisition. Uh, it will allow uh, networking, uh, communication in challenging environments uh, through different, uh, again, uh, approaches uh, uh, like reduction of bandwidth, uh, also energy harvesting is an important feature. Uh, a big part of the work will be on analysis and decision-making te technologies uh, ranging from distributed, distributed computations uh, to, to some to development of some new approaches, some new algorithms uh, in order to allow the, the calculation of the, uh, the lifetime, etc. And after the end, of course, again, uh, these uh, improved capabilities of uh, human-machine interactions. Uh, that's the overview of it. Uh, and of course, the impact will be as well in higher competitiveness of the um, productions uh, of the fleets. For example, if we are talking about the vehicle fleets, uh, um, as I mentioned, avoiding unnecessary investments, minimize, minimize part inventory. That's again one important issue, uh, increased equipment lifetime, I described earlier. Uh, increase uh, availability of assets, um, uh, namely repair and overhaul time, they should be reduced. Uh, either it is planned or not, whenever production is uh, stopped, uh, that is uh, not good for company. Uh, and also on the sustainability level, there's a lot of uh, yes, business opportunities. Um, important for our, uh, uh, let's say, SMEs and uh, companies being involved in the, to the project. Uh, and that's how we come to the implementation part. Uh, the project is organized into nine uh, work packages, uh, but the, the, I'd say the, the most interesting are those, as we call them, technical ones, which deal with uh, platform architecture, smart sensing, uh, computational intelligence, uh, and uh, HMI development. Uh, of course, the, there is the also the validations through use cases that I mentioned. Um, and the others are like uh, typical project uh, work packages. So if I try to bring you back this big picture of the proposal concept, uh, we can see that uh, work package three, which is kind of a sensing and communication uh, is materialized in, in uh, here. Uh, intelligent parts, intelligent computations are those being some local computations on the level of uh, sensorics or those being like either distributed or cloud-based uh, somewhere in the clouds, to say so. Uh, Human-machine interactions are separate work package 
And of course, this <coughs> platform uh, connects all these together uh, to form the, the, the whole system. Um, and just to, to, to give you the current state, uh, you know, uh, in, in way of sensorics, uh, uh, smart sensing is required, uh, pre-processing is required, data acquisition is required, uh, and at the moment, uh, these are kind of a, uh, works that are being uh, underway. Uh, there are some new sensors, mostly on the level of soft sensors developed at the moment, uh, and some uh, local, uh, local computations and preparation for data fusions and pattern analysis on the level of sensor data that is uh, the, the low level, like this low level computation, uh, which you, of course is connected to, we say, high level uh, uh, computations. And on the level of high level computations, uh, computational intelligence, uh, th this is what is going on at the moment. Uh, development of uh, modeling techniques to detect anomalies, to, to observe trends, uh, uh, different approaches like those being mentioned in the previous uh, uh, lecture. Uh, are some ideas are very probably also implemented here. I'm not directly involved in this, into this work package, but uh, I, I assume in order to uh, predict uh, some complex patterns and to detect them, um, many of those regression and similar approaches are needed. Uh, yeah, the, this is the list of the, uh, not the algorithms in itself, uh, but of the problems that those algorithms are addressing. It is about root, uh, root uh, identifying the root cause of failures, uh, predicting the wear out uh, uh, techniques to extend process uh, mining techniques, uh, combining historic data with current state, uh, etc. Uh, ma many different uh, algorithms are involved. Uh, most of them are the just implementation of known algorithms. Some of them are adaptation of known algorithms in order to be available uh, to be be to better suit uh, or, uh, better suit uh, problems of root cause uh, failures uh, or similar. Uh, and few of them will be will be done from the scratch because of the uh, specific uh, specific of the problem. Uh, this is like one one uh, one of the use case uh, ideas and uh, how what is the data flow of date uh, yeah data flow uh, it is uh, from the let's say one machine into the system is it uh, computation in both directions. So computation is going on all the time. Even when you have some data, we have to reprocess it for the, some other high level information to get. Uh, and this image <coughs> somehow represents uh, that it is not like a straightforward process, sequential process. We have the data, we calculate something, and we know it. Now we have the data, we calculate something, we calculate something else, then we calculate again something else that allows us to calculate something <coughs> fourth, etc. And uh, we get some additional data and part of this process can be also treated of like those uh, either soft sensors or being treated like some additional computational intelligent algorithms that give us some new information. Uh, and with regards to um, in interactions, 
uh, the, the, the focus is on automatic self-adaptation uh, and intuitive inter interactions, which is both uh, needed to fulfill all those requirements of uh, collaborativeness, uh, context awareness, similar uh, marketing pieces. Like at the end, uh, this is one of the important parts. Uh, sorry, serving the right personnel with the right information at the right time in the right format. Uh, I presented you before. It is important who am I, what am I doing at the moment, uh, to do exactly what I need to do at this, is at this moment. Uh, to uh, uh, the information must be presented in the format that I understand. Uh, if I am some uh, technician, then I might require some data sheet with uh, low level details of some part. If I'm some uh, office guy, then I only need the information about, I don't know, where to get this part uh, and maybe a, a rough uh, price of it. Um, this is just sketch one of the processes uh, in, when the, this prototype, HMI prototype was built or is being built, it's not finished yet, uh, how to involve all the processing uh, algorithms, how to define or uh, specify all the possible interactions, uh, maintenance situations, etc., to build them into the scenarios in order to build some prototype. Uh, it, it, this, this picture requires a few minutes of description in order to understand it better. Uh, but I guess one, one of the samples that I'll try present, to present it now uh, will give you the maybe the rough idea. And after, I don't know, more than half an hour, you might understand the first slide. <laughs> and when I show you this uh, two video, videos, uh, they are prepared by one of these, one of the partners in the proposal in the project, right? uh, and they show some basic functionalities uh, for configuration and monitoring. In one video, uh, there are some basic computational intelligence behind, etc. Um, during all this presentation, I, I was not able to give you some, maybe even more interesting information. Because, uh, as you have seen, there are use cases, there are quite big, very known companies, and they explicitly have forgiven, not just me, but all the other uh, partners to tell some very interesting things about them. Uh, but uh, we are allowed to, to show you the following. The idea is to have something like uh, this. This is very quick now. Uh, some system that, that allows you or different uh, uh, person in the company to follow, to monitor what is going on, to, to record some special uh, sesh, uh, uh, situations, to change information to pass the information to another person. Uh, if you imagine this is like one tablet of one person, uh, he can select what to see, he can send his data to another one, another operator on the other line, side of the production line. He immediately sees, okay, this is what this one wants to say, say to me, similar. This is now the, the merging of different uh, uh, ideas. Now it is about uh, some vehicles. It, it now shows how it is quite easy to, on the fly, uh, decide, okay, I would like my colleague to tell him this. It was like dra drag and drop some information to send it to, to other one. 
So on the fly, this is like, I don't know, some regression methods, for example, whatever. So it is on the fly. We get some new information. It is not pre-programmed. We didn't know that this will happen. But we get some information, some strange data, and we just select one of the uh, algorithms. It might be also that these algorithms are automatically selected in the future and try to tell us, OK, there is obvious that there is this overheating because of the part 75 in the line 79, whatever. Uh, so th that, that's the idea of it. Uh, if I jump to another one, um, this is about the visualization uh, when some techni technician uh, just approaches the, the motor behind. He already, you can see, gets the information what is inside. He can get some additional data out of it. Uh, maybe he requires this for the sake of uh, repairing it. Uh, selecting some new parts, etc. Uh, so it is not necessary that I'm the uh, serviceman that I daily work here. If I'm <coughs> here daily, there's no problem. I know this <coughs> model, for example. But it might be that I'm some uh, serviceman walking around different assets, uh, different parts of my company. So I'm not able to know each motor, each part in details. But this. Uh, approach this platform, which allows also these advanced visualizations, allows me to to more, more plastically see what the problem, where is the problem, what are the possible solutions. For example, how to open this uh, uh, appliance, uh, how to disassemble it in order to come to one particular uh, screw, uh, etc. So. What are the next steps? Uh, as I mentioned, the project is on a half of its way. Uh, the first prototypes are planned for the next spring. So this conference is just too soon <laughs> to give you some more, some more details. Uh, but uh, if you follow us on the, this website, mantisproject.eu, uh, there is a constantly like almost weekly update of what is going on, uh, what is nice, what is important. Uh, and uh, about these two videos I just sent, showed you a couple of minutes ago are something that for those not being involved into the project uh, might say something uh, nice. <laughs> Otherwise, there was a lot of talk about what we are going to do, what we are, go what we are doing, etc. Uh, but this might show you what is really on its way. So, uh, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I have explained the entire system, how it works. Uh, but I have a question. You try to implement it into a factory, right? Yeah. And I can imagine this factory is a huge factory having a lot of uh, uh, cooperants around. Yeah. So I'm interested in how do people react to adjusting to a new system? Do you have any challenges in training new workers to work with your system? Yeah. Like this uh, this idea is one of the how to approach new workers. How to uh, allow <coughs> someone new to uh, to get known with the, the system, with the production. Uh, he, he might know nothing, but just in ideal case, he would take his mobile phone or tablet, go around the factory, and he will recognize each part into details. He would see straight. Um, so this is one of the way how to uh, um, give some knowledge to new workers, for example, uh, and about the collabor collaborative part is okay. This the first video. Uh, when was the situation uh, like something happened, and then you saw that it was dragged and dropped into some box, and this was actually well. That's that's something that I don't know what it what it is, 
and it was like sent through the system to the some external provider of the of the pump. Why is this pump overheating, for example? It is not usual, it never happened before. It, the information was sent to the producer of the pump, but and they might know because they have pumps all over the world, uh, and it might already happen some, somewhere else. So he can give back the information, like if you recall 30 slides behind, <laughs> this collaborative uh, aspect on the level of the, of the vendors, and th that's how this system, platform, uh, merges uh, different actors. Was it like what you do you use only heuristics as information source, or do you have any other tool? Because you have shown only heuristics. You have, for instance, a proper school worker, and it, it has high edge, high edge. And you engage another who is also good skill, and you just make a tool for heuristics. Well, wow. that's information. Why is the the historical information and no, no, all, all the, the process information? The information of the process. That's what happened. The historical plus the current. Current because you, you are in maintenance. Yeah, but you also you merge. That's your reasons. That is the information. Thank you. Okay. I'm just a curiosity yep. because. Uh, Congratulations, my finance is a key issue in industrial engineering. And my question is both in uh, uh, reactive and pre proactive uh, maintenance, sometimes you have to face with, uh, uh, let's say, linguistic variable, expert uh, comment, uh, what is also used uh, or known as condition monitoring. So some expert that notice something. Yeah. Uh, this system is also able to manage data that uh, comes not from sensors, but also from... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was in one of those uh, uh, items I, I, that I, 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 I just noticed, but qu quickly skipped, yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, not only the sensors. Yeah, we, we can say that also people are sensors <laughs> yeah, in this uh, sense. Uh, those people with knowledge about it, uh, we, who know how to react for example, uh, also uh, didn't mention, but it's written. But it is about building the, the all the taxonomy, ontologies, uh, and everything in order to make sure that diff different words, uh, uh, human and technological, can uh, meet and can communicate. Sometimes so it is difficult to make them numerical. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other question, please, uh, to uh, speak uh, on those, because we should have another session. Okay. Uh,